Welcome back, everybody, to the 2023 Music City Open presented by Lone Star Disc. Super excited to be here in Nashville, Tennessee for the latest elite event on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. I'm Connor O'Reilly, and today I'll be on the mic solo watching some amazing shots and watching these players navigate the third different iteration of this Mill Ridge Park that we've seen since we've been coming to Nashville on the tour, and I think this is the best one yet. Conditions were wet after a soaking rain yesterday and overnight. Let's see how these players can navigate some slippery surfaces. We're gonna have a look at Katrina Allen, number one on the tour currently. Second on the tour in birdie rate, she's looking to score. Lisa Fakus, playing for Lone Star Disc, the presenting sponsor. Looking at a 950 rating, and this is her first year playing for Lone Star. And then we all know Kristen Tatar, number seven on the DGPT tour ranking this year, but behind on a couple events, and she is currently the world number one, I believe, on the UDISC ranking. Kat Mersh, 960 rated, out of Arkansas, not too far from Tennessee here, and we've seen her a number of times here on Ace Run this year. Hole one is a par four at 646 feet. There's gonna be a couple options here, but most of these players are gonna be looking to play it up the gut. If you can be off to the left, you open up some more options into this green. Otherwise, if you pinch yourself right, it can be really hard to get this one up there for a birdie look. One of those holes that par is not a bad way to start, and this course played tough today, you guys. Lisa drags this one over. Solid distance, not too bad. Kind of in the bowl right there. That bowl that Lisa landed in, if you can just clear it, you have flatter footing and that's probably the ideal place to be. Let's see if Katrina can get a little more distance, plays this one kind of scarily to the left, but really gets a good ride out of that. Should be a great landing zone. You see Kristen kind of covering her discs up. Must still be some water coming down. Yeah, you can see it kind of splashing in those puddles. It's crazy how little rain shows on camera. An early release out of Kristen. Gonna be a very hard spot. And Kat got the safari hat all pinned up today. She's looking to do business, but not too much sun to deal with. Help keep the rain out of the face, though. You see her kind of look down at the footing, maybe indicating a little bit of slippage there on the tee. And yeah, curls kind of towards that out of bounds, but stays in a decent spot, just a little short of where she might ideally want to be. Yeah, Kristen probably just looking to take a bogey from there. Sometimes it can be hard to throw forehand when it's wet. Just less surface area of the hand on the disc. So it can be a little more slick. Lisa was in danger of testing that left side out of bounds, but luckily came in slow enough to not skip too hard. Cat just gets that nose driven down a little too much. Doesn't look like she gets the curl out this time, and it's a very nasty spot in there. Will be very surprising if she can save a, a par from that position. And Kristen actually got a little further up there than I thought. She has an outside chance. Oh my gosh. Great skip there on that forehand up to circle's edge. This would be a big par save.
and Katrina definitely backhand dominant but she's got a good mix of the forehand and just gets that one into the turf Lisa got a little wild on that one kind of threw it a bit harder than she needed to maybe some of those first hole jitters Yeah, Katrina kind of in a cluster of trees on the right side on the green here, but she should have a pretty open window. And one of the themes out here at Mill Ridge, it's a very open property, very reminiscent of a, maybe like a, a Jonesboro type of property. Just they use those cuts of woods nicely and a lot of these greens will have some sketchy sides to them where you can't really get a clean footing. So you really gotta make sure you place yourself on the proper side of some of these greens. And yeah, we saw Cat just had to pitch out and pitch up. Kristen, bar Kristen barely off that high left side. She knows that would have been a really good par save and lets out a wry smile. Yeah, Lisa has to get down to a knee in there and catches that number one number plate on the band. You can see just how carefully Katrina was walking down into the green there. It's super muddy on the course today, you guys. It's the the crew, crew has done a good job trying to lay mulch on most of the greens and on some of the more walked on areas between holes, but some of these greens, you could be in a great spot. And I mean, I had a lie today where I stepped behind my mini and my foot went down about two inches and kind of the ground moved and it made the mini kind of slide forward. I had to ask my card like, oh, that's my mini, my mini move forward, but I'm just gonna stay here. Like I didn't, unintentional. And here we see three bogeys and a par. Hole one actually played at three quarters of a stroke over par today, so it's gonna be on the harder third of the track. And uh, yeah, one of those holes that you're pretty happy with par. Hole two, another tough one, out of bounds, pinching left and right, and it gets more and more narrow as you approach this wooded tunnel that finishes off the second half of the hole. Ideally, you push it to the right to give yourself a sight line into the basket here, and then you gotta play a straight shot and try to land it circle's edge short because out of bounds is only 25 feet long on that left side, and it continues to kind of just peninsula all the way around, so really good birdie to pick up if you can Katrina a little heavy on the hyzer you can see a lot of skip on this fairway most times she's gonna be left of ideal but if she plays the ground play correctly she can still give herself a look and the key on a shot like this is really to push that right side out of bounds and make sure you choose the proper stability Kristen just a bit out of sorts off the tee to start. But she's in a position where it might be kind of easy to make that decision just to pitch to the corner, pitch up, and take an easy par. And honestly, could even go to serve her well on a hole as difficult as the second. Cat really pushes that back out of bounds like you need to. Sloppy footing will be her biggest opponent on this shot. And yeah, like we said, Kristen... Hitting it flat, getting into the gap nicely. She has a very short chip up from there, maybe 120 feet or so, maybe less. Katrina. Nice touch of Heiser on a straight disc. Skips that one up to a very muddy 45 footer. She likes to jump up from that range and it's gonna be really hard to commit to there. I do have to give a quick shout out to Macy Vela Diaz and Holland Hanley for the only birdies on hole one. Here we see Kat leaking right over there. She is in bounds and you will get two meters of relief on either side of the fairway on this hole but she's still gonna have those bush line to navigate and see if her safari hat comes in handy on that one. Ooh, and Lisa 
really gets fortunate catching a tree trunk there, otherwise she was definitely headed for that out of bounds. Kristen playing a harp up into the green and giving herself a pretty simple chance at par. Cat having to float one up there. Traps into the mulch. You might think that mulch looks okay and dry, but that's where I stepped into my lie and sunk down about two inches, so it's this entire green green is just extremely muddy. Katrina in the bad footing, puts it up. Let's get that flight factory run back well earned. Such a scary spot to kind of commit to out of, out of bounds long. Really good balance there from Katrina. And Lisa able to connect and take advantage of that good fortune coming into the green. I think being a natural straddle putter the way Kristen is is an advantage when the conditions are the way they are today. You don't rely on as much back and forth motion out of your legs, so it's easier to not lose balance. And Katrina actually only one of three birdies on hole two today. Gotta give a shout out to Holly. She also picked one up, so. Excited to see her back out here tomorrow. Said, there was a lot of changes to this course from the years previous. This is our third iteration of trying to find a hole in these woods and this one is very tight, super technical. There's only a couple disc flights that will really give you a chance. Ideally you give yourself a look at maybe circle's edge to the right right there by that tassel next to the tree. I think that's about the purest way you can get it. If you want to get aggressive you can try to flex a backhand as a righty. The straight shot to me though I think is a little less dangerous and uh, yeah, let's see what these players would like to go with. Katrina first on the box, and that is a bad miss. You need to be right of that tree, and she is in some jail. Is also out of bounds left and right, so she can't just pitch out to the open. She's going to have a very tricky up and down from there. And Lisa hits kind of that three-headed monster tree that's right in the middle of the big fairway gap. You ideally want to shave just to the left side of that guy. Kristen hangs that forehand just a little bit too straight. These players are looking at a right to left wind coming through the gap here. So also something to note and Kat puts the hands up, knows she needs some fortune and hanging out by Katrina over there. It's gonna be tricky for both of them. Katrina showing off the flexibility and yeah, leaves herself in another wall of trees. Let's see if she can make another miracle putt or not. No, that last one was not a miracle. She just got skills, but this one would kind of be. Yeah, another tricky part about this hole, especially off the tee, is some of those hanging branches are hard to, hard to kind of discern as they all kind of just blend in together. You see Cat Mersh catching that same branch, but fighting through. Yeah, gets herself a nice 20 footer. Gonna be very happy with that spot after a very early, late release off the tee. Lisa making sure to feel out that tree behind her. Very fun to see. Making sure she's kind of calculating the amount of arm swing she can get back. Puts it up nicely. have to settle for a bogey for Kristen. Oh, and Katrina just 
kind of fluffed it out of the hand. Maybe it kind of thinking that right to left was going to do something to her disc and just didn't quite commit. And yeah, cat, you can tell she thought it might be low, kind of hesitated to go walk that one in, but excited to see it drop. One of those par threes that you're definitely not convinced that you need to birdie it to score well on this course. You almost play it par four rules or just super tight wooded hole rules. Just hit the initial gap on an angle and make sure you can at least take par. Fortunate bogey for Katrina, but honestly, from the position she was in, it can get worse fast. And we saw a lot of big numbers on this hole today. Hole four, we're looking at a par five, 814 feet. You want this first shot to land somewhere right around this dry spot on the hill here, allowing you to throw a shot across the creek you can get it 50 to 100 feet through the creek you should have a really simple shot up into the green for that birdie it does slope away to the left and we have an elevated basket so one of those greens that can really eat you if you don't commit and uh, let's see how these players attack this one once again we have a right to left wind here great angle good stability out of Lisa playing flat on a stable disc and Letting it fight out late. We know Cat likes a little more hyzer most of the time. Probably that Thunderbird that we've seen her throw a ton on these par 4 placement shots. If I had to guess by that flight. Katrina pulls this one over nicely, getting a great tight skinny S flight. Oh yeah. Kristen playing more of the hyzer stand up finishing out left and she's gonna have a good angle to attack the further out left you are the more you can play it straight into the gap and not have to turn it at all and Lisa puts a good move on this one gonna have a pretty stock up and down for a birdie look The only real danger I feel like on this one is trying to do too much off that first tee and putting yourself in a bad position. And then if you somehow don't happen to get across the creek on the second. Also, obviously, the green you can get a little greedy on, but if you put it in bounds, you can do a lot of things and get a birdie here. But this was, wow, what a late release out of Cat Mersh. Kind of is grip locked in. A little embarrassed, but it's all right. Uh, she's a professional and she knows her skills, so I'm sure she will recover. Sometimes when you're anticipating maybe the bad footing and a slip or something, those mistakes can kind of compound. Katrina plays this one really wide, and I think that was probably intentional just to open up the angles she can come into the green with. She can play it straight at it now. She can play hyzer. She can even play... A forehand collecting into the hill if she wanted from there. Kristen throwing that harp puts it up there very nicely. Yeah, cat's way over here by the next tee almost. But like I said, you can be almost anywhere across the creek, and as long as you got some distance, the birdie is still on the table. Lisa puts that one a little long. She's been coming in kind of hot into the greens all day. Let's see if she can dial in that distance. It is important to note that most of the week in practice, at least Monday through Wednesday, we are looking at an opposite wind to what we saw today. And uh, I think Thursday was really kind of rainy, and I'm not sure if the wind direction exactly matched this or if it was the same as the other days, but this is definitely a wind that we have not gotten as many reads on as we would like. So a lot of these players still kind of dialing in certain discs on the course. Uh, and that 
left to right Lisa's looking at and just a slightly late putt just not able to connect cleans up par though definitely a hole that you can make a mistake and par is going to be right there for you I think it takes really two mistakes to take a bogey at least sometimes you can even make two mistakes and still par here though the par fives in this course you keep it in bounds they're definitely good ones to try to score on but like any par fives, they can they can bait you and do them more than you need. Hole six, very unique hole, super hard dog leg to the right. Most players looking to throw a shot somewhere out right around here, whether you want to get in front or behind this last cluster of trees that were flying to the left of here kind of up to you from there you got tight out of bounds tucking on the right side of the green coming in here and it's not too far out on the left where you can just spray it out to the left you really have to be accurate on this approach one of those holes you can play the same same shot twice so you can kind of find a rhythm on it Katrina asking this to lift and we'll see if she got far enough to be able to throw Straight shot to the basket. Kristen, early release. But gonna, I don't know, we'll see if she's able to stretch around those bushes. It's not ideal, but for as early as it was, it could be worse. She's just been a little bit off with that forehand so far. And Lisa playing a little bit too understable or missing her angle maybe. See if she can birdie from there. It's going to be tough. Cat, I think, going on that Thunderbird and just maybe overcompensating for that late release a couple of throws ago. Crushes a high hyzer over the trees here. Claps. Must be inbounds. And uh, yeah, she's gonna be able to take par from there most likely. Lisa not quite far enough off the tee after she overturned it and once again overturns this one, catches the right side of that gap and she's not gonna have a pretty look from there. Katrina showing her maturity and experience by just playing it straight, understanding she doesn't really need to press for the birdie on this one, especially probably watching her card mates kind of struggle. She understands that, you know, don't have to do too much. And Kristen just flexing that harp around there, choosing a disc that she knows she can't do too much with and try to still save birdie. I think that also showed some great experience. If y'all have never played disc golf in Tennessee, there's a lot. Some of the thorns are pretty pretty intense out here. There's, I believe they're called like black locusts, these trees with these massive thorns. And then there's just those undergrowth thorns as well everywhere. So very pokey place. Cat, a little, little wide, but she gave it enough height to fight back. And if she can hit this putt, I think that'll help her settle down a little bit. Oh, and Lisa finds that there's like a fence right there behind the out of bounds line. And most of the time you can kind of bounce off it and stay in bounds. It's a narrow margin to actually be out of bounds there. And Lisa just barely creeps into it. Katrina hangs out on a circle too. Uncharacteristic misc. But this tight corner and the basket kind of being out of sight can really make this one trickier than it would be if it was just wide open. Yeah, there you see Lisa's disc, just a mere two and a half inches out of bounds. She loads up and just holds onto this one a touch. She's going to have to settle for a bogey here. Katrina looking at another jumper. We know she likes these. 
but that left to right tailwind just she doesn't give it enough height there we go cat able to save par on a bit of a wild hole so those uh those kind of putts can really keep you in it Lisa unfortunate triple I forgot about the out of bounds stroke Kristen kind of high on the chains but collects her par there and staying in control even though her forehands off the tee has just been about as bad as you'll see from her so she can get that going look for Kristen to start crawling under par Katrina unfortunate bogey brings her back to even let's see if anyone can birdie on the next one I just think the plastic is very premium. I think it's the quality of plastic. It's unlike any other plastic that you'll find in the industry. It's something I can consistently trust. You're gonna wanna put multiple discs in your bag. You can only say so much where they have to eventually just try it themselves and see. We thought hole five played tough, hole six played a little bit harder. It's a par five at 849 feet. You really gotta get just past this corner here. And the more left you are, the better chance you have to get yourself up somewhere right here around Henna and Evelina. From there, you might have a turnover backhand, straight backhand or a forehand shot into this green. Another one of those holes where you keep yourself in bounds for three kind of basic shots you can grab this one but can be tricky it's easy to hang it too straight like we see from Kristen here and not give yourself an angle to go through that gap she's probably gonna have to throw some kind of scramble shot over the top or just pitch out to the left and try to take par cat high and early still almost pushes the corner but We'll see if they give her the spot around that corner or not. I don't know if she flew there necessarily, but we'll see what the card thinks. Katrina also pushes this one straight like Kristen. Very common spot here. It's a daunting, daunting hole. I think you take the out of bounds out. It's super easy to get to that landing zone, but mentally it just tightens you up a little bit. And it can be hard to commit to this one. Lisa's, Lisa's gonna have the best positioning of the four competitors and yeah it looks like they don't give cat the corner up there and i think that was the right call pitches up and from there she can still possibly save lisa plays a very in control shot and easy par possible birdie from there christian just spikes one up She's gonna have kind of a high spiking hyzer over some out of bounds if she wants to try to attack this one. She's been kind of playing the marathon game, so let's see if she continues. Katrina, similar spot, pretty much the same play. Let's see if she can get some pushback left. Yeah, that looks like on this. She's in a spot where she can just throw straight at the basket. Kristen looks like she might be pushing this one a little bit long, but nope. Chooses the right stability to fade in there, and we'll see if she has forehand or backhand. Cat. A lot of the rough on this course is out of bounds, but they happen to leave this patch here as inbounds Let's go. Okay. good to see cat still having a good time even though you know her throws have been a little wild and sounds like maybe she got out into the front that's maybe why she got pretty happy because yeah it can be nasty from in there lisa just not quite hitting the angle or the stability she needs once again she's been having a tough start 
you can see the wind just toying with Katrina's upshot there. Just sucked it out of the air. Kristen kind of hangs on to that one a little long. And gonna give herself a tester. Lisa trying to triangulate where her lie can come back to based off of her three or her one meter in and then the straight line of play back to the basket that you're able to utilize to give yourself a better angle. This looks high but it looks nice and yeah spikes that one in should be able to clean up Cat forehand approach puts it in nicely and definitely breathing a sigh of relief that she didn't have two big blunders on this one. Yeah, Katrina just didn't quite have the pop out of the hand that she needed on that one. I don't know if she was thinking the wind was going to do something more if she was kind of disgusted with herself there, but... The wind was tough at Mill Ridge today, you guys. We saw a lot of really good putters not put up the percentages that we're used to seeing from them. And that wet footing, sloppy footing can really kind of affect your weight transfer and your timing as well. Double bogey for Kat Mersh, putting her at three over par so far for the round. Lisa cleaning up bogey. She had the best drive of the group, but that third shot just got away from her a bit. Kristen also having to settle for that bogey. And Katrina as well. Hole six showing you guys its teeth. Such a tough tee shot to get yourself left enough to really attack on this one for the birdie and then, yeah, it just, it just makes you overreach if you're not out of position and hard to settle for that par when you're one of the best players in the game, as all these players are. Amber waves of grain flowing here on the seventh. Beautiful par three that really fits the eyes. 436 feet. The long grass does play inbound, so gotta make sure not to be over there in tick central and push this one somewhere onto this beautiful down sloping green. Out of bounds continues on the right, pretty close, just outside the circle and long. Beautiful, fun hole to throw and very wind dependent. You can change, you can really change your disc decision based off of what way the wind's blowing. Kristen flexes over a driver very nicely. Not sure if that's Rive or Grace, but gonna give herself a good long look. I think this is one of those holes that taking a par, you feel pretty happy. Birdies feel really good here. Katrina gonna need this one to dig. And yeah, kind of an obstructed window over there to pitch up from, but she's got a good tool bag to use. And Lisa looks like she's finally matching that angle that she's looking for, pushing that right side, getting the late fade. Not quite the distance you want, but puts herself in a good spot to be able to take that three. Cat maybe playing a mid-range, looks like, possibly a slower disc. Or maybe just misses the height on a fairway driver, but either way, I think uh, one of those holes that doesn't really matter as long as you're inbounds and somewhere semi-close, you can get up and down and you're not going to lose much other than to the handful of people who might have got this one. Oof. Lisa almost gives that one a bid, but checks up nicely. And I was told today that this course, it, it is not permanent, it's its a temporary course and apparently with this long grass they kind of let it grow out on most of the property and uh, harvest some hay out here so they got a little, little farm operation going at Mill Ridge. It's a very good venue for disc golf and I, I'm excited to see how it continues to 
grow and progress as we keep making little changes and they've definitely done a good job beautifying it. I think it looks a lot better on camera this year than in years past. I think they made little changes, let certain rocks be bare. They trimmed certain areas where you can see to the pond now. And I think uh, little changes like that really can help make a course more memorable for you fans and for us players too. Cat crawling over the rim for that bogey. Good comebacker after sailing it high. Sometimes when you sail it high, those those comebackers can be definitely a little bit extra nervy. And Katrina just... You see players who use a lot of up and down motion in their arm swing. A lot of times those shorter ranges can be kind of tricky. It can be easy to get those band hits or cage hits because you're using a lot of up and down motion on the putter. Kristen and Lisa taking that cleanup par that you're looking for on this one. And unfortunate bogeys for Kat and Katrina. Katrina had a solid start, but definitely starting to slip a little bit. Needs to get it going here on the 8th. And hole 8 is a 315 foot par 3. MPO and FPO play the same exact hole in this one, and it's a good one. I really like this one. I think you gotta play a disc out straight, a little bit of turn to the right throughout the flight. Ideally, you miss this corner of stuff here on the left and swing your disc in, landing somewhere around circle's edge to slide up. This is a beautiful green, and uh, it's a demanding tee shot. I think we'll see flex backhands out of a lot of these players. Kristen though going with that forehand it really does open up to the right so forehand is a good play if you got it that left side is jail whereas the right pretty wide open as long as you beat the initial stuff and Lisa just cranks this one a bit luckily it doesn't curl up too much to the left and should have an easy up and down for that three. Katrina puts a beautiful angle on this one. Oh, and just doesn't get past the stump that was left down. That's, that's hard to see. Sometimes these new holes like this, they have a lot of inconsistent ground play. She lands that disc literally one foot left. She probably slides up for a gimme putt, but now she's she's got some work to do. Cat also going with that forehand, catches that last cluster of little island of trees out on the right. It's really the only thing to navigate once you beat the gap, if you're on that right side. And there's this late defining tree right here, obviously, that's at Circle's Edge. Whew, Cat getting a little flirty with that left side and going to be very happy with that result for sure. I think she said she just needs to go home, so uh, just showing you the kind of round she feels like she's having. Still on the front nine, though. Keep it keep it together, Cat. Come on. Kristen gives that one an honest bid. Almost able to ring it up. Oh, Katrina just two inches low for another jump putt. She threw such a good drive. It's unfortunate to see that one not get the ground play that you see a lot of discs possibly get here. And Lisa's just been hanging it to the right all day. It just hasn't quite got the release timing down. Kristen takes par. Lisa with the bogey. Mersh with the par, and Katrina with the par. Hole nine's a fun one. Plays to a green we used last year, but a different way to do it. Let's check it out.
hole nine, a very picturesque par three at 327 feet. They cleared out all the nasty area around this big tree right here. Not sure exactly the type of tree. I'm from Texas, not Tennessee, but it's pretty. And they got the mulch underneath it. And uh, you really gotta beat it flying straight. Unless you have that big power forehand out to the left, there is a pocket, but this one's really just a pure straight shot. Out of bounds long with this out of bounds creek. Also runs on that whole right side, not too far off the bush line. Kristen going straight at it with the forehand. And luckily stays out of the bushes. She's gonna have an opportunity there and being a natural straddle putter, that won't be as tricky as for some players. Katrina way early out of the hand. Fortunate to slide through that one and not push too far left. If you get to the left side and behind that big tree there, it can be very tricky. Cat with a nice little kiss off the trunk of that big one. Gonna be an easy pitch up from there unless she's feeling frisky. And Lisa puts a great move on this one. Finally able to hit that angle she's looking for. Gives herself a look. See if she can connect and grab that first birdie of the round here on the ninth. Katrina hangs that one way wide and very fortunate to get kicked out there. She could have ended up a couple feet in and that could have been a nightmare. Cat's, Cat's going to have a bit of a hairy putt, but very makeable for the par save. Yeah, and Kristen tries to give it a floaty one. That out of bounds is not very long behind, so definitely something that was on her mind. And another one on that cage for Katrina, centered up, only a matter of inches away from being still under par right now. Oh no, and Lisa gives that one a great look, but just not able to get it to drop. And, you know, she committed at least, but kind of hurt to have that first birdie look of the round and end up taking the bird double. Oof, that's a hard one to swallow. This hasn't quite been Lisa's day and at this point she's just got to buckle down and try to make sure she stays in it so that she can work her way up into that cash. Katrina with the bogey started off pretty solid. Just hasn't quite found the rhythm. Kristen tapping in that par, making sure to lift the umbrella off the ground. You do not want to have a supporting point of contact messing around with that, so something to note for you guys walking up with your cart or walking up with your umbrella just let go of it make the putt and as we saw the front nine was playing tough today you guys the ground was saturated and the scores were not as low as most of these players would like to see but honestly it's a tough course and putting yourself anywhere under par is going to be great today macy bella diaz minus two through nine holland hanley also under par everyone else at even or over Let's see how many birdies we can get on this back nine. Kristen had a slow start off the tee, but she's starting to find a little bit of a rhythm. Let's see how these other players are able to navigate the open rolling hills and out of bounds of Mill Ridge Park here in Nashville, Tennessee for the 2023 Music City Open. Don't forget to subscribe and like Ace Run Pros are bringing you guys some sweet content all year and are going to continue. These runbacks from Flight Factory have been much appreciated and helped highlight some of the best shots we've seen.